I'm Damon Scotting, and this is 10 Space Questions in 10 Minutes. Which planet has the most moons in our solar system? Now, for a long while, this title was held by Jupiter, but recently, Saturn gained a new member of its family. In fact, quite a few new ones. Saturn now has 82 moons, whereas Jupiter has 79. Now, it's likely in the future, this will change, as every single year we're discovering new moons around the gas giants such as Enceladus or Titan. So Saturn may not hold the title of most moons for very long. Drones low on battery. Who was the last person to set foot on the moon? Well, that title has belonged to the same person for the past 50 years. His name is Gene Cernan. However, he himself is not very proud of that title. And that's for the simple reason that when the Apollo missions were happening, the interest in space exploration was at an all-time high. We choose to go to the people moon. wanted to see we people on the moon, on Mars, on different worlds. But after his final Apollo mission, Apollo 17, no one has left any more footprints on the moon. And that's because the space race was over. America had won and beat Russia, and there was no more funding towards space exploration. By now, he would have probably expected us to have a base on the moon, maybe even a base on Mars, but that and simply hasn't off. happened. Who knows, maybe in the next 50 years, we will have more footprints, not just on the moon, but on Mars and other worlds. How many rovers are there on Mars? Well, right now, there are just four, all of which were launched by NASA. The first was in 1997, Sojourner. And then in 2004, two more landed on the red planet, Spirit and Opportunity. And in 2012, Curiosity made it four. But as of right now, Curiosity is the only one that is still functional. But it will soon be five rovers on the surface of the red planet. And that's because right now, traveling through space is a rover named Perseverance. And in February 2021, that will become the fifth rover on the surface. It's very exciting times because we are moving ever so closer to proving once and for all if there is indeed life on Mars. When will our sun die? Now our sun is about four and a half billion years old and is likely it will live out its life as a main sequence stars for another five billion years, before eventually it swells into what is known as a red giant. Now at this size, it will likely be so large, it will engulf Earth in its orbit. But whereas this will be the end of our life on planet Earth, it may be a new beginning for planets and moons further out in the solar system. As it expands, it will likely heat up the most outer planets and moons, and we could potentially see life on places like Titan, Europa, and Enceladus. What is the largest planet in our solar system? Well, when we talk about the planets, we usually split them up into two categories. You have the inner rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then you have the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The largest of the gas giants is the god of the planet, Jupiter. It is 142,984 kilometers in diameter. That means it's large enough to contain 1,321 Earths, making us the size of a marble compared to this. In fact, do you see that great red spot on the surface of this planet? That is Jupiter's raging storm. It's visible from here on Earth for a standard telescope, and it's likely been ongoing for more than 400 years. It is so large that the surface area of this storm could swallow our planet three times over. This entire storm would consume our planet with room to spare. 
How big is your anus? Not big enough. If you want to know how big the planet Uranus is, then that's about 51,118 kilometers in diameter at the equator, which is very large. It's about four times the diameter of Earth. Uranus is a gas giant, but when it was discovered by William Herschel, he wanted to name it after King George himself. So, at its time of discovery, it was known as Planet George, which means the gas giants went as Jupiter, Saturn, George, Neptune. But sooner or later, people decided that that was a dumb name for a planet. So instead, they named it after the Greek god of the sky, Uranus. And make sure you remember that part. If you take anything from this video, remember that. Not Uranus, Uranus. So how long does it take to get to space? Well, believe it or not, at any given point on the surface of our planet, you are always roughly 100 kilometers away from space. Now that might seem a bit shocking, considering most people will drive further than that every morning to get to work. This right here is the Saturn V rocket. It's the most powerful rocket ever launched. It took eight and a half minutes to leave Earth and reach space. And the astronauts aboard it will experience 3G during the launch process. Now that's the same as you'd experience on one of the most intense roller coasters you can find. But you'll only feel it for a few seconds. Astronauts aboard a Saturn V rocket like this will experience that feeling for eight or nine minutes. And then when they reach the Earth's atmosphere, it will drop from 3G almost instantaneously to zero G which is a very intense feeling and not many can deal with it, which is why to be an astronaut, you need to have the right stuff. How fast can we move? Now, that's an interesting question and it depends on the way you look at it. As humans, we can move at speeds up to 45 kilometers per hour. And if you're wondering how fast that actually is, well, it's about this speed, but two times faster. Okay, that's just gonna be one take, I ain't doing that again. But in terms of physics, the speed limit of our universe is about 300,000 kilometers per second. It just so happens to also be the speed of light. Now there's many complications with traveling at that speed. Perhaps the main one is that the closer you approach the speed of light, the slower time moves from your perspective. What is at the center of our galaxy? Well, it's the same thing that is at the center of most galaxies. One of the biggest mysteries facing science today, this is a black hole. Now, black holes are incredibly curious objects. We know very little about them. We know they're incredibly dense, which means they have a small volume or size, but a very large mass. What we also know is that the center of a black hole is a point of infinite density known as a singularity. Which means, if you get close enough to a black hole, there'll eventually be a region in which the gravitational pull is so strong that nothing can escape it. Not even the fastest thing in the universe, light. So what would it be like to fall into a black hole? Well, you'd be stretched from toe to head at a speed of light in a process known as spaghettification. And if you want to know what it's like at the center of a black hole, you've got a very slim chance because your atoms will be ripped apart individually. This is perhaps one of the most exciting prospects in science. Maybe we will never know what lies at the center of our galaxy because we will never know what lies at the center of a black hole. Okay, now the final question is one that's been popping up a lot recently. It's a question that people have asked for millennia. 
is the Earth flat? Now, in order to explain why the Earth isn't flat, I'm going to need more than 10 minutes. So I'm just going to run quickly through some of the main reasons why we know the Earth isn't flat. Number one, the night sky. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, I see some very different stars to those down in the Southern Hemisphere. And that could only happen if we were on a sphere rather than a flat plane. Seasons, the Earth has a 23 degree axial tilt. Wouldn't happen if we were flat. The water on our surface, how does it stay here? It wouldn't do so on flat surface, it would fall straight off. But on a sphere or an obloid, it is tightly bound to the surface by gravity. And that's another thing, gravity. How do we have an even distribution of gravity on a flat object? Doesn't happen, basic physics. What about the rest of the planets? How come when we look for our telescopes, we see them as disc shapes? Or how come if I stare through my telescope long enough at a planet, say Jupiter, I notice it rotates on an axis, meaning it must be a sphere? What if I went to the seaside and watched the ship pass off into the distance? Number one, why can't I see the Burj Khalifa whilst looking out to the distance? If the Earth was flat, I'd be able to see the world's tallest tower and everything else around me. What about the ship passing off in the distance? How come when it disappears from my point of view, it does so by tilting up its backside? Well, it does so because the Earth is a sphere. The Earth isn't flat, and to say so is not only ignorant, it's arrogant, and it's promoting bad science. Don't listen to people who promote bad science. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. How would you like to feature in the next video on Astronomical? Well, today is your lucky day. After hitting 25,000 subscribers on this channel, I'm gonna be doing a Q&A. So if you wanna feature, make sure you leave a comment down below on this video, or leave a comment on my most recent Instagram post, and you could feature in the next video. The questions could be about anything. They could be about how series one was filmed, or maybe about space in general, if you have any questions, such as why is Mars is red, or, who was the first dog to go into space? So make sure you leave a comment down below and you could feature in the next video. Cheers.